Hi. Today's so this lesson is on word categories in Arabic. Um, like any other languages, the categories of words are quite universal and Arabic has the categories that other languages have. For example, we have nouns and adjectives and verbs, pronouns, affective words, adverbs and particles. So, um, a noun would be something like kitab. It could also be a, an isim alam or the name of a person, for example, Zainab. It can also be uh, a noun that is based on a pattern template, for example, uh, masna. So these are all nouns. It could also be something like demonstrative noun, like heather. Okay. And in Arabic, you also have adjectives. Adjectives, there are many, many templates for adjective. One example is jamil, beautiful, which is on the template of fail. And we have verbs kataba, which is to which it means wrote, and verbs in Arabic we have the past and non past. So the past would be kataba and the non past would be motore and also imperative. Pronouns. Now there are basically two types of pronouns in Arabic. One is the detached pronoun, which is like anta, you or ana, I, nahnu, we and the attached pronoun. Attached pronouns they don't uh, don't ex cannot stand on their own physically they cannot stand on their own so they have to be attached whether as a prefix or a suffix for example ro i to ka i saw you ka is a pronoun that is attached to the word and we also have affective words such as hey hat how very far to achieve how impossible okay um adverbs as in fauka tahta okay above uh, and particles, there are many, many particles in Arabic, as in wa. Wa is uh, like and, or can also, and also several other meanings. Okay. Huna, here. Now, uh, most Arabic words are composed of at least two derivational morphemes. So, a lexical root, which is uh, like as in ra, fa, ra, which means forgive. This is a trilateral verb, fara, which represents a lexical root, a trilateral lexical root, can take on another morpheme, which is a pattern template. So, for example, when I when we add the alif sin te, istamala to rafara, it becomes istalfara, and now istalfara takes on a new meaning. It's still a verb, but it takes on a new meaning, which means to seek forgiveness. On top of the lexical root and the pattern templates, which which usually uh, represents a derivational morpheme, then we can also add inflectional affixes to the verb. So in, now we had istafara, which was in the past tense, and then yastafiru, which is in the present tense, and now we have nastafiru. Now nastafiru, if you look at the na here, the the morpheme na here, na here is a pronoun morpheme. Okay, and it means we. Okay, so nastafiru is we seek forgiveness. And to add to that, we can also have suffix pronouns at the end of the verb, which is like nastafiruka. Nastafiru, we seek forgiveness. Nastafiruka, ka is a pronoun, which means you. Nastafiruka, we seek forgiveness from you, or we seek your forgiveness. So, and... And so you can see here that Arabic is very economic in the structures of its words. Okay, the morphemes can come together. The morphemes come in the shape of a template, and they just then additional grammatical meanings are just added onto the templates uh, to the to the words. Okay, and um, Arabic is a high a word with the. Uh, Basis the system of uh, the word uh, the word system in Arabic is pretty much based on lexical roots, as in many as in uh, the sem is as, as in other Semitic languages. So uh, the lexical roots are verbs, and most of the Arabic lexical roots are trilateral, which means it they have the fa, ain, lam of the fa'al. So, for example, in kataba, which means uh, wrote or to write, ka is the fa of the fa'al, ain is the, uh, uh, sorry, ka is the fa of the fa'al, t 
ta is the ayn of the fa'il and la and ba is the lam of the fa'il kataba similarly we have the uh, we have word like shariba to drink or he, or he drank okay so the fa of the fa'il or the fa in the root okay the fa of the fa'il is shin the ayn of the fa'il is ra ri okay ra ri and the lam of the fa'il is ba Okay, so if you read uh, a traditional Arabic uh, grammatical books and when, whenever you come across something, a uh, phrase that says uh, Ainul Fa'al, so if you say Ainul Fa'al, then you know that is the, the middle letter in the lexical root. Or if it says Fa'ul Fa'al, then that's the initial letter in the lexical root. If it says la Lamul Fa'al, then it's the final letter in the trilateral root. Now, sometimes Arabic does have quadrilateral rules, which are, uh, for example, Daharaja. Okay, and thank you.